video space. How great is our God. And I go Welcome to Divine Christian Church. A Christian fellowship where we serve God in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 to 24. Our weekly services are as follows. Monday to Saturday, Divine Support Daily Revival Fellowship. From 8 to 9 p.m. London time. On Sunday, we fellowship from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. London time. Our other services are as follows. Every day we have our seven days a week Operation Push Intensive Midnight Prayers phone conference from 11.45 p.m. to 1 a.m. London time. Every Saturday we have our Save One Soul Per Week evangelism from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. London time. For more details, please call or WhatsApp plus 447908338. 4348 Divine Christian Church We are a Bible believing Pentecostal and evangelical church with a strong appetite for the uncompromising propagation of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ John 4:23 to 24 Our mission is to find develop and make ready a people that will not only achieve an all-round fulfillment here on earth but more importantly, spend eternity in heaven. John 10.10 10. Our vision is to optimize the benefits that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ present by building an international Christian community that is fully maximized in their spirit, soul and body. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 and 3 John 2 adore him and to exalt his name. So let us pray. Our first prayer point this morning is to ask Jesus to cleanse us and wash us in the blood of Jesus. Because every day is a new day and you know sometimes we don't even know the little things that is not comfortable with our creator. So let us just ask him to cleanse us and wash us in the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that, Father God, we can come into your presence to ask you for your forgiveness, to ask you, Lord Jesus, to wash us and cleanse us in the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, the Bible says that as it is planted after the water goes, Lord, so our soul is panting out to you. And therefore, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus this morning, anywhere, Jesus, there is something, Lord, that will cause you to hide your face from us today, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, our soul is panting for you. And Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to search us, to wash us, to cleanse us in the blood of Jesus and make us whole and worthy, Lord, that we can come into your presence to, pray, to praise you, to adore you, to exalt you, and to lift up your name on high in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And our next prayer point today, let us pray and ask the Lord this morning 
to lift up every one of us, to fill us with praise today, to fill our hearts, to fill our empty souls today, so that when we pray and when we exalt Him, our prayer and exaltation will go up to Him as a sweet smelling Savior. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus today, we ask you to search us, Lord. Father God, we want to be found in the right place with you today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Father, to take away every barrier, every unclean thing from around us today, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, every unclean spirit within this building, Lord Jesus, Father, today in the name of Jesus, we bring them under your subjection. Because, Lord, we want our praises to come up to you and you alone in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are a good God and a mighty God. And you are a God of the living. You are not a God of the dead. And, Father, this morning we want to worship you, the living God the God of our souls, the God of our salvation. Father, today in the name of Jesus, anything, Lord, that will prevent us, Jesus, from rejoicing and giving you the glory, Father, today in the name of Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost devour it and cleanse it away with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, bless the name of Jesus. We'll hand over now to Sister Judith. And can we give a quick clap offering to the Lord? He's already one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you're happy to be in his presence, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for making us to see the last Sunday of May. Father, King of Lord, this man was it's just like or it was just like as if you were yesterday, but many have died. Many are in the hospital, many are in the mortuary. But it's a, it's a privilege, Father, to be alive in the land of the living. Father, King of Lord, we worship your holy name. Thank you, our Father. Thank you for you are too faithful to fail. Thank you for you are our Redeemer. Thank you for you are always there to help us. Father, I will say, let your name alone be highly exalted. So if you are in his presence this morning and you know that he's too faithful to fail, I would like us to be on our feet. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize that you're too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to fail me. You are too. Yeah. 
Wow.
problem. Hallelujah. Let us take comfort in the word of God and continue to live and to boast in the freedom that God has given us. God bless us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Evangelist. Um, I just want to say that, you know, God is so wonderful. He speaks to us from every angle. This, the Sunday school lesson, although I was late, from what Sister Comfort was saying, was when we take a stand for the Lord and look at the scripture that he, she has brought out, just to buttress us that whatever it is, taking the stand, God, whatever we are going through, the Lord is with us. Amen. We will never drown, we will never be burned by any fire, we will never be defeated because He has already won the victory. Amen. What a wonderful Hallelujah. God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, it's a hymn, I think. Yes, Sister Tanya is king. Sorry if I can't pronounce your name properly. Is it correct? Tahani. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you for standing for the hymn. Amen. Amen. In all things we give God thanks and all the glory. Amen. 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 So in the count of three, let's all sing to our maker who deserves all the glory. One, two, three. To God be the glory. Great
Um, I wasn't well. I wasn't well, that's why I wasn't coming to church. Because uh, um, when my son died, you know, like when you heard that your son, your own child died, you get this shock in the body. So I was feeling this pain. I didn't understand. Even though sometimes I'm coming about the pain was just too much. But I still pray. But the devil is a lie. You know, the devil tried to fight every, every angle, every area. But I ended up in um, hospital, not because of that pain. I did have a pain here in my side. And when the pain started, you can tell you, I can't even move. After hold on, I was crying. The only thing I could say, it's like my life will leave my body. It's the only thing I could say, God, show me mercy. God, show me mercy. God, show me mercy. God, show me mercy. That's the only thing I cry out for. When I went in the hospital, I couldn't, I could hardly go, but I ended up, I went to King's. And when I go there, they do x-ray on my, my, my thing there, my side there. And I didn't know that your side there connected to your lungs. I didn't know that, this side. But when they doing everything, they said, I have infection there, and there's fluid there. I said, how oh, I get that? And he said, it was really bad. And the woman said to me, it's a good thing I come to the hospital. I could have died. I could have, the pain was so much. If you're sick, you mean Debbie come and see me. But Debbie come up for three weeks and she come and see me. Debbie couldn't be, Debbie said, come in, you look so. Look wild. But you know, I just want to give the hand up. Um, Debbie called Pastor Eugene. He prayed for me. And this other lady, she prayed for me. But I just want to give God the honor and the glory and the praise because only God alone can take me out, out of everything I'm going through, no matter what. You see, sometimes we don't see people come to church. Don't say, oh, why they don't want to come to church. Sometimes people don't even know what you're going through. Don't know what I'm going through and not going through a battle, but I know God himself going to take me out of it. God, the enemy, why I'm looking to myself and I said, no, I do I know my son died and he's one year, couple months now. But I have to get through this. I can't stay on one level and say, oh yes, my son died. I have to pull through it because the enemy want to put me in that grave. But I rise up out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yesterday, I redo my baptism because I promised myself I will serve God to the day God ready for me. And if the enemy tried, I will, I will shoot him. And he shall die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Because my heart, I'm ready to serve God. I'm ready to die for it. I'm ready to lay myself on the cross in Jesus' mighty name. to pray for me. Come when this thing do come. Encourage me. Please. I'm going to love. It's not easy to lose a child. Sometimes people say no, but it's not easy. You Sometimes people will say don't. But when you don't lose a child, you don't know what a person is going through. Because yeah. me and my son was so close, and, it, and because it's a sudden death, he wasn't even sick. That's the worst part of it. I, don't, I can't even explain why my son did. Even when I go to the coroner court, I'm standing right here, I'm not even lying. They can't even tell me why my son did. That made me think different that someone killed my son spiritually. I'm not gonna lie to you. I even called Pastor Eugene, I was saying it to him. I oh, know they can't tell me. People was there, they sitting, I was just crying. They can't even tell me. They said, oh, my son, um, heart is okay. The body passed, this was okay. So why he died, they can't even tell me. But I leave everything to Almighty. Because God is going to revenge my son, no matter what. So anybody who do anything, I'm not accusing anyone, but I leave everything in Almighty God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Any more testify? Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. This morning, I just want to give God glory. I want to give him the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am so grateful for this opportunity in the land of the living, in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God, giving him the glory that is due unto him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, bless the name of Jesus. And as a parent, my heart, my spirit is touched when my sister testified. And I just want to encourage you this morning that this season that we are going through is a terrible season. And the enemy like to cage the people of God and back us up. And I encourage you, don't fight on your own. Reach out. We have, a lead, we have leaders and we have people of God who will stand with you. Because the enemy is not so silly. He knows the point, the bullet point to touch us. He knows where it will hurt. I know what it is to fight. And I know that everything we go through in our life is not just for us. It's a process, it's a season that God will carry us through. Isaiah 43 said, when, when, when we pass through the fire, when we pass through the water, it will not overflow us, we will not draw, we will not burn to death. This battle is not ours, it belongs to God. And through God we will triumph, we will come out victorious. Oh, 
Sister Beverly said yesterday, by the grace of God, I rebaptized. What? Not because I want to rebaptize, but because I've, I am trying, by the grace of God, all glory to God, to put myself under so that He shall be exalted. And the last time they did their baptism, towards the end, the Holy Spirit told me, You should have gone back there. And then I said, you know what, I didn't go for the class, I didn't do anything, let me not just rush. I know my husband would have done it, but I said, no, obedience is better than sacrifice. So when he said that he's, they're going to do it again, I said, oh, now I have to do what I have to do, come and do the classes. I might be a pastor's wife, but I'm still subject to the pastor as well as to the Almighty God. Amen. So I have to do things accordingly, Amen. accordingly. Just like everybody else, I'm answerable to someone, irrespective of me being the next person to the pastor. But all glory to God, every glory to him in the name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus. If we have not been baptized, or we do feel in our, within our hearts that we want to be, be, uh, be baptized again, don't feel ashamed. Go ahead. It's between you and your maker. Not what people think. What people think does not matter. What matters is what God thinks. And if God is saying, this is what you need to do, you do it. Don't look at what people say. Because at the end of the day, as Sister Comfort said, it's the Father and you that will stand there. There's no husband. There's no wife. There's no children. There's no cousin. There's no brother. There's no sister. It's just you and your Creator. That's my message for you this morning. Amen. 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 All glory to God. Amen. Um, Father, we say thank you to you this morning. Amen. Thank you for all the love that you've been showing to us. Even the things that we have not seen, oh God. Even the things that had happened, but you did, we, for some reason, Father, you did not show it to us, but you kept us away. We are saying thank you in the name of Jesus. And the biggest gift that you can give to humanity is that breath of life. That is the, the, the thing that is the precious, the most precious than diamonds, than gold, than silver, that is keeping us alive, oh God. It is your breath. Once the breath is gone, we are mere sand. We are saying thank you to you, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I also want to thank you, Lord, for my sister. In the spirit I was there, she turned 60 yesterday. We thank God for her life, and I know God will use her mightily to do great and mighty works. As they say, uh, the age is just a number, but as we get the ages add up and add up and add up, may we go from glory to glory, honor to honor, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, as we come before your presence once again, let your name be exalted and let everything about man be put down, but you be exalted above all in Jesus' mighty name. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name.
let this cup pass. So very soon we are going to look read a very uh, a popular passage of scripture from the book of Luke chapter 22. And by the time we read that, you will see that from the context of Luke chapter 22, cup means suffering. That is why Jesus asked one of his disciples, are you able to drink of the cup that I drink? Hallelujah. The cup meaning suffering. The cup meaning challenges. The cup meaning moments of uncertainties. Are you able to drink from the cup that I drink? Hallelujah. So our different personalities drink, have different cups they drink from. And also, our different level of spiritual attainment have different types of cups that all, all of us drink from. So I believe the more we grow with the Lord, uh, the more um, challenging the cup becomes. So for example, some of us cannot, we might find it very difficult to backslide because there's no food on our table. But there are some people that can even cause God if there's no food on their table before 6 o'clock in the evening. And that is why all of us are individuals. But one important thing about I know about God, anything God brings our way, or anything that God allows to come in the way of a believer, God prepares the believer for it. Yes. And so he, he allows the devil to bring things our way. But God will never give you more than you can bear. First Corinthians 27 verse 13 completely, in case you think I'm just looking at my head. So when the devil comes, when the devil comes, he will. Ah, that one appears. If the devil leave you alone, then why are you a Christian? It becomes more complicated when we decide to serve God. I've known people who were here and there with God. The moment they decide they want to serve God, that is when it looks like every kingdom of darkness started knocking on their door. But when they were serious with God, they just, their Sunday, how many of us remember Sunday, Sunday medicine? Sunday, Sunday medicines are those people that come to church only on Sunday, after Sunday service, they pack the church and Jesus Christ one place. And just carry on to normal and then Sunday they come back and pick up pick up Jesus on Sunday morning. Okay. And after service on Sunday, they go home, they pack Jesus and the Bible one place. Then somebody was telling me and enter that one. So when they were doing it like that, there was no problem. But I know so many people that when they decide, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Come clap for Jesus for yourself. I didn't know that you have found my mistakes. Hallelujah. Maybe Moses, please, and the rest of you may not know this one because they are young, young, young ones, sharp, sharp, lovely young ones. So these ones are like far back, you know, far back. And I'm happy that we know that. We know the song. God bless you. So when we decide to follow Christ, it comes with a cost. Yes. But one thing I also know is that the people that decide to follow Christ and the devil fight them left, right, center. Most of them that remain on track, by and large, win the battle and then go on to fight other bigger battles. It yeah. never stops. Yeah. It will never stop until we see Jesus. And it is a good thing God left those battles there as a way of so that we can check ourselves. I'm telling you there are some of us that if not because of the things that is facing us, we can't even pray. Maybe myself, I know I 
I, my mom took me to church when I was a small boy, and that seed she put in me and helped me. But maybe the way I was doing my things, maybe if God didn't allow me my eye to see that, and maybe I would sit up and say, God, I'm coming, God, I'm coming, God, I'm coming. So God knows how to deal with us as individuals. Some of us, He bet us, because if He bet us, we listen. Some of us, He hold us like policemen like this. Yeah, three of us are my name. I'm being arrested. So, me now, so you hold me. Because you get the one point, I tell the come and the come, and it was the right thing to do. I know I'm not being arrested. I know it was the right thing to come back to court. I said, Can they come? Let me finish this thing. Let me do this one. Let me do this one. One day, look, just like, look at this boy. If I leave this boy, <laughs> the rafts will come, never even make anything. But I know it was the right thing to do because my mom used to take me to church until I became a teenager, I stopped going. But inside of me, I know it's the right thing. Except that I'm procrastinating, I will come, I will come. And let me just play this secret. Let me take my mom. Let me do this one. Let me finish this party next weekend. Then, so, uh, God made you left me like that. So some of us, God pamper us, God have a proper discussion with us. He pampers us so into the kingdom. And we just go, I surrender, I surrender. <laughs> some of us, I'm telling you, he said, angels grab this boy before the devil finish it. So he holds us like this. And we now we kick like cricket. <laughs> Do you know why God will have the right to hold us like that? Yeah. For me, I believe it's my mom's prayer. Yeah. And listen to me. Because my mom will say, I beg, when I say yes or no, I just pull out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom now get correct because my mom hold me. He at that point, I know I keep my mom. When I be saying yes or no, just I give you a right to hold like this. So I'm going to spread the just prayer, you know? Yes. I want to go and say, God, when I'm coming, say, no, your mom said, grab you. <laughs> that was how he arrested of me. So he deals with us in different ways. Let's look at Luke chapter 22, let's quickly. The labor was suitable as soon as they are. Let this come pass. Verse 39 to 46, very quickly. It's a scripture I love so much. I love it because it, it teaches me, it taught me a lot of things, and it continues to teach me a lot of things. Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 46. Shall I read quickly for us? And he came out and went as he, uh, as, as he was wont, as he usually do, to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he arose from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Arise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Hallelujah. Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So this one I can't, you know, I've spoken about it a couple of times. Jesus was sent from heaven. And Jesus knows exactly why he was coming. If we retract a bit, God created the world in Genesis chapter 1, and then created Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2. He put his breath in them. They had a good relationship with God. But they fell to sin in Genesis chapter 3. 
So God brought in the Ten Commandments as a temporary arrangement before the main deal came. In other words, the same way when Adam and Eve fell to sin, and when God came to them, they said, Oh, we are hiding from you, God, because we are naked. And God made a temporary arrangement for them. What was the temporary arrangement they made for them? He sowed a fig tree. Okay? That was the first clothing. How many of us know that Amani suits? What do you wear? What do you wear? The first genesis of clothing come, come from where? Fig tree. Just get some grass and leave. <coughs> So like for me, for example, who the Bimkana market, what you do, who, is, who designs clothes, for example, any clothes is designed. The genesis of it comes from the fig tree and grasses that God used to clothe Adam and Eve when they fell to sin. And from there, Amani and his people say, my God, there's a business opportunity here. And then they say, we have to design ourselves, and then they put label on it. Now I was talking to Stockholm for the rest. Some of these things I just put well, they just want to count money. <laughs> so some of this labor they said because we've used one kind trend. They said, don't you see how seeming the seeming go? That seeming like a job. So the genesis of clothing came from leaves and grass. That was the first clothing that Mark do. And of course, this moved on and then people started advancing businessmen started you know depreciating the opportunity to grow their business to make money yeah. but god brought in ten commandments because he was waiting for the fullness of time before the main deal came in the fullness of time that god was waiting was so that the timing can shine in with the one who was specially prepared to announce the arrival of Jesus and to even carry out his baptism. So there are so many considerations that heaven took into account when man fell to sin, and there are so many reasons why God did not just rush in Jesus to restore the fallen Adam. For two reasons. First, I said in the past, God wanted man to, to see value in him. Because we know that when God created Adam, how many days did Adam fast to get the power? How many tongues did Eve speak to get the power? Were they, were they, did they grow? They were created as adults. So the wedding process, they just walked into fullness. And sometimes when people walk into fullness, the problem is that experience is one of the greatest teachers anybody can have. Experience builds character. Experience can do one of two things. Those people who want to be positive about experience, it can mold them, build them, strengthen them. That's why Bible says, patience worketh out character. James said that in us. So experience can do one or two things. People can either allow it to destroy them, or experience can build character from people. And so God said, Adam and Eve did not, they, they just became adults. Everything was just given to them on the platter of God. So they saw only the good side of God because when they were created, the nostril came into them, Adam jumped to his feet, and then before he knew what is happening, God gave him beef. He said, my God, so what can be better than this? So that's so like me. And so they took things for granted. And so God said, you know, God has a way of doing things. So sometimes, some of the things we are going through, God can bring one thing into our life, but he wants to use it to achieve so many things. We can be going through one thing, but God knows how to use one thing we are going through to achieve so many things around our life and our destiny work and our journey. So when if Adam and Eve made that mistake, God said, well, I'm going to number one, 
break the Ten Commandments so that through the Ten Commandments, number one, Adam and Eve can see the other side of life. So God effectively took grace away from Adam and Eve when he brought the Ten Commandments and allowed the people to please God by the work of their hands. And then all of a sudden, Adam, who used to be a guardian of Eden, everything was working for him. The only thing he does when he wake up in the morning is just go and water the garden, spread some things in the garden, and that's it. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that same Adam now started tilling the ground. It wasn't just a person of him getting up maybe around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, when he's had enough sleep, could just come, could go water the garden. Maybe we'll do the garden as, um, what's it called? What do you call something as, uh, you know, your uh, leisure, leisure activity. Okay, so it's not like, you just go, go do it as a part of leisure activity, just pray, go against that, and everything is blows away. But when the problem happened that he compromised righteousness and holiness, God said, okay, well, let's, I want Adam and Eve to see the other side of him. So the same Adam that can wake up around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, just go and water the garden and that's it, he go back to his tent, whatever God made there for them. God said, instead of just watering that garden and it's okay, you are going to till the ground and sweat from your face. But even if it were just that, it would have been good at least to be around that atmosphere of the Garden of Eden and be tilling. But God said, no, that the atmosphere in the Garden of Eden was actually made to be a place of excellence because I, and the Garden of Eden was supposed to reflect what was in heaven. Everything was working in the Garden of Eden. And God couldn't possibly allow Adam to remain in the Garden of Eden because the Garden of Eden was supposed to reflect heaven. Heaven is the very purpose. So God pushed away Adam and Eve. In other words, when Adam and Eve compromised God, not only did they lose power, not only did they become natural, they became homeless as well. So if you want to talk about it, the history of homelessness started with Adam and Eve in what? Genesis chapter 3. That is why you see people who are British born, they are on the streets. How many of us have seen like proper British, like African British born, Caucasian born, Asian born? So British passport is not a, a, is not a covering. I've seen so many of them, if you have seen, I've seen them. In worst case scenario, in under the train station, winter time, I'm sure, look, God has been a great soul. When I'm passing, I say, God, but how could this person be here? Some of them, there's snow and then there's a duvet. I'm sure maybe there's some type of, I don't know, how, how are they surviving? So when you talk about life being cold and people being cold to life, number one, the UK weather is, it doesn't mess about but it wants to be cold. And then the mental and atmosphere around them was cold, emotional, everything around them was cold, or is cold. And I asked myself the question, how do these people really cope with this situation? Hallelujah. Amen. So that is what it is. So they became homeless. And that is actually the history of homelessness. So all those things weren't working, so God went back to the drawing board and brought Jesus Christ. He brought Jesus Christ for the purposes of perfection to remedy what was not right. So Jesus knew exactly why he was coming. Jesus knew that if he didn't come, you and I have no hope. But yet, he got to one point where Jesus was so pained. He was so challenged that he started talking to God. He said, God, if it be possible, is there any way I can avoid going to the cross? Okay, I know all of us are very faithful people. We are very powerful people. You don't ever ask God questions like that. It's only me. But that sometimes, God brings you and I to the place where you ask questions. 
they bring you and I to the place where we begin to ask questions. But what we need to do is to ask God to give us the grace to be very careful about the question we ask Him when we find ourselves in this situation. Praise Jesus. He brings us to that point where we ask questions. So here is Jesus saying, God, as I was consulting with Jehovah, he said, Is there any other arrangement we can make? Jesus didn't really want to abandon us. That's, why, that's not why he asked that question. He said, if it be possible, can you remove the cup? He didn't say, I don't like this pool anymore. I don't care. That's not what he's saying. He said, is there any other plan we can put in place for me to still redeem these people without necessarily going to the cross? So that we don't think that Jesus at one point wanted to abandon us or hated us. He can't because he's not in himself. And God said, well, heaven said to him, well, you know there is no other plan. The only way we can remedy, because Adam and Eve were already dead anyway, they were dead spiritually. So the only way we can bring that life back is to um, mortgage a sinless life so that the life that is there can come alive. That was what happened. And so, every now and then, most Christians, if not all Christians, find themselves in a similar situation like Jesus. God is a God of process. Often and to say, God, can I skip this process? God said, if you try and circumvent this process, <laughs> you, the process is putting you in the front. <laughs> yeah. So you cannot really circumvent it. And so that we think, okay, God, this is you are doing it now. I may be smart, I may be clever. Let me circumvent it. God's okay. Circumvent it, but the process is still waiting you in the front. So it's a momentary relief. The best thing is for us to just say, okay, God, anyhow you want this journey to be, He's the one that knows the end from the beginning. Yes. Before we were born, he said, before he formed us in our mother's womb, he has drawn up the blueprint, designed everything, put everything in place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Impatience, he said, possess your soul. We have to learn how to be patient with the Lord. Yes. And listen to me, my brethren. In your patience, possess your soul. That is why Galatians chapter 5 describes patience as a fruit of the Spirit. Because it is that patience that will help us to run this race and stay on it and finish. If you don't have patience, if anybody doesn't have patience, there's no way they can run this Christian race and make it to heaven. How many of us want to make it to heaven? I want to make it to heaven. Praise Jesus. In your patience, possess your soul. Praise God. So we need the patience. Let the devil come anyhow he wants to come. Hallelujah. Let him come anywhere he wants to come. We too will win him. Hallelujah. We too we will want win him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 21, verse 19. In your patience possess ye your souls. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 21, verse 19. Possess your soul in patience. Malatus caprakos caprona dosotuya. Why is it that God wants things to be done the way he wants them to be done? There is a time and a season. Sometimes if we try to defend things for God, it could delay us. It could make the journey a bit longer. 
Maybe some of us have made decisions in our lives that made the journey process that God wanted to take us through a bit longer. That is why we have to be very, very, very careful with decisions. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In John chapter 9 and verse 4, somebody read for us, please. Gospel according to John chapter 9, verse 4. There is a time, Jesus said he will walk the walk of his father in the daytime. Because in the night time no man can walk. John chapter 4, 9, verse 4. I must walk the words of him to send me while it is day. God bless you, my daughter. So in the daytime, there is a specific time that God wants us to do some specific things. If the things that God wants us to do in the daytime, we don't want to do it. It gets to, if it becomes nighttime, then it becomes a bit of more struggle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because everything God wants us to do for time, He produces the grace for it. That is why I'm so grateful for my sister, our sister Camille. She was sharing her testimony today. Some of the things she's gone through, she's going through them, not because God put it on, on her, because God will not put terrible things like that on her, but God permits it. She is engraved in the palms of the Lord. The devil obviously is attacking her, but the grace to still keep standing inside of those attacks of the devil because she have decided that look this time no turning back hallelujah. hallelujah and that is what i want to beg of all of us there is a time that god wants things done i just pray one prayer for us that we should be we can we be in tune because oftentimes we make some mistakes, we make some decisions. Yes. And that decision, to be honest with you, our decision is either taking us forward or taking us backward. And sometimes in the physical, earthly realm, we make the decision, we think we're going forward, but in the realm of the spirit, that's not what God really wants. I share that testimony that since, since I've started driving in this country, I haven't bought a car, I haven't bought a car with my money. A couple of times, people have gone to the, to the car shop, they bought one car and they bought exactly, so they bought, they, they bought two cars. Exactly the one they bought for themselves, they bought another one for me. As if we are twins. <laughs> and usually, to tell you that God is in it, every version of the car is always better than the other one. And so there was this other version that somebody brought, and then I was driving, I was driving it, I was driving. At one point, the car now started asking me a lot of questions. The car became a bit old. So I began quarreling with the car. <laughs> when I woke up in the morning, the bike was in Lamro, Konakusa, car, let's go. <laughs> and then he tried to get to say, But did you watch me yesterday? <laughs> Anyway, at one point I was thinking, I was telling Mommy Joe, I said, it looks like I probably need to go and get a car because this car, the way they go, I don't understand it again. <laughs> Without car, I didn't learn how to push car for road. Because <laughs> <laughs> at one point, if you could the best for me to go the road, I don't go again. <laughs> and I would go, we would go on it, boom, 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 boom. Somebody money, can I go to Jewish, right? 
<laughs> not Jewish right to, to, to harm you, but in the, in the, they ask the money because they need to go and read up. So the fact that you walk, you do business, you earn money does not mean that you have to spend the money the way you like. Because yeah. people spend the money the way you like can put us can put our financial situation in jeopardy. Prayer that spend Yeah. Because some people, it's not just that people take your money and take it to other things, but some people can ask you for money, you don't even know what they want to use the money for. Some of us will give somebody money, you don't know the person is asking the money because he wants to take his girlfriend to a hotel. The grace of God will cover us if we don't know, but be very careful. And people who do things like that know how to die. Somebody wants to go to a shrine, the lady that also bring uh, cola, bring uh, champagne, bring uh, fowl, bring cow, goat head, or bring whatever. And then they come to you say, ah, you know what I'm having? I've been purchasing since morning, I want to go to GP. <laughs> and you not being in the spirit, so this, but this person saying that they purchase purchased since morning, they say that, say that they, have, they have just about 30 seconds to, to leave, saying so they want to go to NHS. You think they are really going to go for pharmacy to get a medic medication? You don't know that these people are lying. They want to go to Crystal Blue Be careful, where you spend the money. Yeah, they have history to yes. Money. Yes. Yes. But they are not even taking it to that place to do your hair. Maybe they are going there to do other things. Some of them will take your money to do your info. But it's just that they are going to consult, they are going to read. When actually the solution at that point should be come with me to the gospel church. So I was thinking about that. Let me go buy a car with this thing. But all of a sudden, it just dropped in my spirit and said, All the ones you've been driving, how do you get them? So I kept quiet. I didn't. I said, No, I'm not going to buy a car. Let's, let's not get in the word of God. So interestingly, shortly after that, Somebody went to the shop again, they bought one car and bought the same car. Now let me tell you what happened to that person. The person brought the car to me within one hour. They were believing God for settlement in this country. That was happening on the Sunday evening. Within one hour of bringing that car, the God resulted in the first day. Okay. In terms of buying a car, we have been able to buy a car with the, by the mercy of God. But it's not so much about driving the car. Say, am I driving the will of God? Am I driving the will of God? Maybe the car will have a conditioner. I will just buy it because I can buy it. And I roll up the conditioner, put the conditioner. And in most cases, I put gospel song inside. <laughs> Let's be careful. As we begin to grow in the Lord, some of the things that God will overlook, some of them will not overlook them. He holds us more accountable. To whom much is given, much is required. Amen. There are some things we do in the past, God will not even bother about it. He will just say, okay, baby, baby, baby. But as we begin to grow, and sometimes if we refuse to grow, God will force us to grow. Sometimes we sit in one place, sit, 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 sit. God will force us to get up and will bring circumstances to our way that will force us to grow. I won't call them, but I used to know somebody. They are very, 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 very financially comfortable. Everything they want, they needed. But all of a sudden, one day, and it's not in the past, says, I'll tell you what happened to them. They are very, very financially comfortable. But after some time, God started taking these people through some period, some season. Now, some of the reasons way to find out whether God is in what is happening to us is the kind of outcomes we are getting if we are responding to God. So this person is not the person that can even fast from 9 to 11 because they really was quiet. But you get to one point when God started taking them through the places, they go for seven days dry fast. They became more spiritual. In our life, we must know by time, God is always interested in 
our dimensions for our lives, but there are always times he's more interested in one over the other. So if God is more interested in building us spiritually, and we're thinking about God, <laughs> where is my bank account like this? That's not what God wants. I'm telling you from my personal experience. There have been times in my walk with the Lord when I would do about, I would build about 90 days fast. After that, when I break in the evening, if I have anything to break it, I'm expecting God to show me like, we are the video here distributing money. Throughout those 90 days, I will not hear anything about money. Even though money has read to all things. At that point, God was not interested, and God had no penny, nothing. Sometimes you finish the fast, there's nothing to eat. And then you drink pure water and you carry on. And you just say, God, if this be possible, let this cup pass. God said, This is not what I'm talking now. This is your cup. Can you drink the ring from your cup? But I put my head to sleep. God began to show me ministry, 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 everything. If I bring my book of record, I have my book of record. Every night, that period, every night, sometimes two times a day, very significant things, very significant. So for me, I was hoping that I would hear a voice and say, well done, my beloved son. Now enter into your glory, financial glory. <laughs> my brethren, nothing like that. And it didn't last for three weeks, so I'm talking about the, the one year before I came to this country. If there's anything like maybe Job would be with envy me then. So I know from personal experience that there are times God is more interested in the world. He just wants to build those spiritual. He's not interested in your material life for that time. So no matter how you cry, the season is not your season for financial increase. And people make a mistake about that. That's why sometimes believers, if they don't understand that there are seasons, Amen. they will say, oh, God, why is everybody going? Why am I still here? And then the devil now comes in, takes advantage of the, of the situation, and then begin to discourage the believer to the point that they become a bit more inertia towards the things of God. That means that we don't even know the direction that God is traveling. We, look, the easiest way to walk with God is to walk with God, flow Amen. the direction that the Holy Spirit is flowing. If you and I are flowing in the direction that the Holy Spirit is flowing, inside of storm, we can still be sleeping. Now, those of us that know how to swim, if you go to the ocean or sea or river to swim, you swim against the, the flow, if you want life to be easier for you as a swimmer, what do you do? If the, the, um, the tide is going this way, you just put your back that way and it's what? Just taking you. That is how it is in our walk with the Lord. Sometimes people swim against, hey! people swim against, God is going in this direction, they don't want to go in that direction. So the direction that God is going through this way is the direction that he wants to. He wants to talk about infilling. He's talking about building us. He's talking about trying to consolidate us in one level. And he wants to take us to another level. We too, our focus is on when is my business going to explode? This career, why is it not going? Move career, move. Holy Ghost, move it. The Holy Ghost is moving in this direction, the spiritual direction. You two are telling the Holy Ghost, move my finances. No, 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 no. When people swim against the tide, this Christian walk becomes very frustrating. When people flow when the tide of the Holy Spirit, if there's joy unspeakable, full of God's glory, even inside of storm. Because when you are flowing with the tide and the move of the Holy Spirit, you just flow. You're covering everything, the grace, everything is there. Anything that God is working or doing in our life, He supplies grace for it. Anything that God is not in, we flow against it. That is why Jesus could sleep inside of a storm when others are afraid. Hallelujah. Amen. Let this cup pass. How 
so often we pray that prayer. And sometimes we don't even know that what we are saying, let this cup pass, we seem to be saying to God, let this glory pass. Because in every cup is glory. No, Jesus, the cup that Jesus drank meant that at the name of Jesus now every knee should bow. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. So if Jesus was carnal, he was, and he said, is it possible to remove this cup? He said, however, not my will, but your will. That is flowing in the direction of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that sometimes we believers, even believers, when we come to the crunch of things, we say, God, let me so deliver me, deliver me. Some of the things we're asking God to deliver, we seem to say, God, deliver me from my glory. If Jesus was saying, oh God, no, 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 remove this cup, technically it's been remove the glory. You and I will not pray the wrong prayers. Amen. You and I will not respond in the wrong way. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let this cup pass. If the cup is from the Lord, flow with the Holy Spirit. If it's not from the Lord, then do warfare. But that brings us to the point about when we go through issues of life, this is the last point and I'll just stop here. What the devil tends to do is to make us be heavily focused on the issue rather than asking God, finding out the basics. God, are you in this matter or are you not in this matter? What are you saying about this matter? Do you know that those kind of inquiry prayers, you may not get the answer overnight, but every inquiry prayer you, get, you pray and get the answers to, it resolves matter very quickly. Inquiry prayers can take about two or three years for God to answer them. Inquiry prayer meaning, God, what is happening? What are you saying about this matter? It can take almost several weeks, months, years to answer. But once God answers that prayer, it unlocks things and it can get you to accomplish what ordinarily you will be accomplished in several years. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 29, Psalm 29, verses 3 to 9, there is a place, go Shanaka. There is a place in that Psalm 29 where it said, it said, the voice of the Lord shake the wilderness. Do you know that wilderness is usually a dry period? Yes. And so some people can go, hey! Some people can go through wilderness and place for several years. But the Bible is saying that when the voice of the Lord comes, wilderness period is usually a moment of uncertainty, fear, things seem to have slowed down, we're not sure where we're going with things. But when the voice of God comes, wilderness, the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. So it may take us several years to pray to find the mind of God and the voice of God in the matter. Don't worry. Once you hear that voice of the Lord concerning the matter, the Bible says things that has not been working, all those kind of troubles and wahadas, God shaking the wilderness, meaning bringing life, bringing revival, things to start working Amen. again. Hallelujah. Amen. Malamu Sataya. Let's read that one very quickly and then I can end. Psalm 29, verses 3 to 9. I'll read this one quickly and then we can end. Psalm 29, verses 3 to 9. The voice of the Lord is upon Psalm 29, verses 3 to 9, and then we can end here, please. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory hundreds. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. So those things that the wilderness, where there's dryness, where thing, nothing is happening, where everything is set to us, Lord, Bible says so when the voice of the Lord comes, it brings what majesty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The voice of the Lord breaks cedars, Amen. bondages, shames, yokes, things that, that like that has followed us all our lives. When the voice comes, those cedars, it breaks them to pieces. Hallelujah. Amen. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Amen. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Wow. Lebanon and Sharon like a young unicorn. 
Here God have a lot of energy, they have a lot of so when the voice of God comes, some kind of dynamism and energy comes into what we do. The voice of the Lord divided flames of fire. They look at verse 8. The voice of the Lord shaked the wilderness. The Lord shaked the wilderness of Kadesh. Wilderness are periods when nothing seems to be working. Wilderness are usually moments of loneliness. Wilderness are periods of uncertainty, fear. It's better for you and I to be patient and pray for the voice of God for several years. Once that voice comes, the things that have stored and you know stayed for that long in seconds. That is why it says that the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. It brings some type of motion where there is no motion. Why does it do so? Because the voice of the Lord has what you call the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith is our ability to stamp our feet to say this is what God's spirit of faith is talking about specific situations we are going through in specifics. And when we are speaking about specifics based upon the voice of the Lord and spirit of faith and encounter, we just it carries anointing, it carries grace. May God speak to you in the name of Jesus. That fear you have in your life, hello, Sitaya. May God replace it with his voice in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I said that fear and uncertainty you have in your heart. May God replace it with his voice in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Those of us at church, please rise to your feet. Those of us online, also be in the spirit. Lift up your voice somewhere, wherever you are, everyone. Just pray one prayer. I don't know what has lingered in your life. Just one prayer and we are gone. And that situation, as you stand, you don't know the will of God concerning the matter. You don't know, you haven't heard from God concerning the matter. You want to lift up your voice right now. Sometimes some of us will want prophets to see for us. We want seers to see for us. There's nothing wrong with it. But sometimes when God puts us in a situation, he also uses to train us to hear from him. If God puts a situation in your life that he wants to train you to hear from him and you're going to prophet, unless it's a fake prophet, a fake prophet will tell you something. Your new prophet will tell you, I didn't hear anything. But this day this happy to go to a prophet, that prophet tell you something. Let me tell you something. There are some situations that God will not even tell a prophet, genuine prophet. The reason being, God put that situation there to train you to hear from him. If that is the purpose of God, the only person that can tell you something about that matter is a fake prophet. So God just said to him. But the ones, the prophets that have the word of knowledge, good of wisdom, they will tell you, I didn't hear anything. If you go to a genuine prophet and tell you, I didn't hear anything, it's most likely God put that situation there to train your hearing, your own personal hearing. There are genuine prophets who are not arguing about that. There are people, God speaks to all of us, no doubt about that. But anytime you go to a genuine prophet and they tell you, I didn't hear anything, most likely, God wants to use that situation to train you to hear from him directly. Listen. So lift up your voice wherever you are there for. There might be situations that you have been saying, God, what are you saying about this matter? It has lingered for such a long time. You have prayed, you have fasted, but it looks like there is no result. Pray one more time. Speak to me concerning this matter. Speak to me concerning this matter. Speak very clearly to me concerning this matter. When you lift up your voice and pray in one second and we're gone. Concerning this matter. Oh God, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. The matter that somebody has not been able to speak to you about, most likely God wants to use it to train you. It's not everything that God tells prophets. Anybody who tells you is the prophet God. Everything is a lie. God keeps some things to train you. Okay? God will reveal things to people.
people are not are having a problem with that. There are prophets that hear from God, people hear from God, but there are some specific matter God will withhold it from anybody, everybody apart from you. Lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Bow so kapanadeya. Ibro koto soto seteya. Resuta bana kete seteya. Ribobo sapala kuskapra. Zebra sota lakatuya. Ribobo soto skepre kanato sotoya. Isuta brakoto soto rika parakoto sotoya. Banato saka. Thank